Wired Equivalent Privacy, or WEP, is a standard of encrypting wireless networks that has been around since 1997, but cracked in 2001. In spite of this, you'll still see them around pretty frequently, so we'll show you how easy it is to crack these networks, coming up next. WEP has been around for a long time, and even though it was cracked in 2001, this doesn't prevent it from coming up in some surprising and sometimes important places. In 2005, TJ Maxx companies was still using WEP in their credit card processing terminals, and some war driver along the freeway was able to detect this, hack into their network, and start siphoning credit card data in what ended up being one of the biggest credit card breaches in US history. This goes to show that WEP is a serious vulnerability for anybody using it. So who would be using it at this point? Well, sometimes it can be old hardware, sometimes people don't know what they're doing when, they're set, when they set things up, and sometimes it can be a honeypot for people looking for hackers going after obvious low-hanging fruit targets. So be careful. Now, how easy is it to really crack a WEP network? It only takes a little bit of information about the network to do it, and you don't need to be connected. So if you're nearby, you can just listen in and eventually get the amount of information you would need to crack the password, but that technique would take a lot of time. Instead, you can have a Panda Wireless or any network adapter that uh, is capable of packet injection, like this PAU06, and use that to get in between the conversation of the router and the client to send some forged packets that cause them both to repeat themselves many times. Now, using this technique enables you to, in a very short pe period of time, build up the information you need to crack the password and get into the network without any hassle at all. So to do this, we'll use two different tools. One is called AeroDumpNG, and we'll use this to take the data from the Panda Wireless Network Adapter, filter it so we only see WEP networks nearby, and use this as a filter for our next uh, program, which is called BSideNG. Now, BSideNG we'll use to attack the network because it's generally like a network attacking tool that's very effective, but we'll need to give it some filter data. Otherwise, it will go after every single network in the area, and that is not what we want. So this all seems pretty simple, and it is. So let's get started. Once you boot your Kali Linux machine, open a terminal window and plug in your network adapter. The first step will be to find the name of the network adapter, which you can do by typing IPA or ifconfig. Here, the name of our network adapter is WLAN1. We'll be using a program called AeroDumpNG to find any nearby WEP networks. So type AeroDumpNG and then tac tac encrypt WEP and press enter. Oops, sorry, we'll also need to put in the name of our network adapter. So type in WLAN1. There we go. Now, as you can see, it instantly found a network using a WEP connection nearby, or WPEP encryption nearby. So we'll go ahead and note the channel that it's on, which is channel six, and then the BSS ID, which is also the MAC address. So we'll copy this MAC address because we'll need it for the next step in which we will tell BSideNG, a tool for attacking wireless networks, that we want to attack that network and only that network. Now, it's important for us to mention here that attacking a network that you don't have permission to can be a crime depending on where you live. So you need to do this against a network you have written permission to audit or your own network in the event that you're just kind of testing this out. As I said, WEP networks make a great honeypot, so make sure you're not cracking into anything you don't have permission to. Now, to start BSideNG, type BSideNG, the name of the network adapter, WLAN1, and then tack C for channel six, and tack B and paste the, B side, the uh, BSSID. So now when you press enter, we should start injecting packets only for this one particular network, because if we didn't put this, uh, B side NG would just attack every single network nearby in no particular order. So after executing this, we can see that after an initial hiccup, uh, B said B side NG is running, and it's selected the co the correct network that we want to attack. So IVs are the type of packets that we can use to crack this uh, password, and B side NG will continue to try to stimulate as many as possible. First with just injection, but then with a, a flood. 
So if your network card goes down for some reason, or if there's any other issue, you can generally just run the command again because it's saving all these things to a .cap file, which will save all the IVs that you are able to uh, pull down from B-side NG. And if you're really having trouble with your network card, you can just run aircrack NG to get both the hex version of the password, which B-side NG will uh, give you at the end of this process, or it can also give you the ASCII version of the password, which is much easier for people to remember. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a, oh, there we go. We'll be able to get a packet that allows us to flood and really create a ton of different IVs in our um, cat file. And it's important to note that this is going pretty fast. Uh, if you were a person who had this uh, Adobe EP network, you probably should be worried that we would be able to get in here in less than five minutes, maybe even less than two minutes, because once somebody's on your network, they can do things like a man in the middle attack, which basically controls your internet experience, can route you to fake login pages, run key loggers, and otherwise uh, steal passwords and worm their way into your life even worse. So now you can see we're doing flood cracking, we're getting a whole bunch of packets, and once we reach around 25,000, we can expect the security of this network to fail. Um, and that just means that we have enough information to crack the password. We no longer need to even be connected to it because we can just run this crack offline wherever we are. So we're at about 6,000 now. Let's watch as we go up to, let's say around 25,000, and we should see an output from B-side NG telling us that it's cracked the password and giving us the hex version. As you can see, B-side NG has managed to get into this network in about five minutes and one second. That's not great security for any wireless network. So if you're using WEP, this is a good sign that maybe you should switch. Now, as you can see, we got the ASCII version, or sorry, we got the hex version of this password, which is just a bunch of numbers. If you want to get the ASCII version, which is actually in text and much easier for a human to remember, you can do that too by using aircrack ng. To do so, just type aircrack ng and then period slash WEP dot cap. Here we can see number one is the network that we're trying to crack. So just type one and it should get to work cracking the key and giving you the, here we go, the ASCII version, which is just ALF20. So that was cracking a WEP network and it only took us about five minutes. It actually usually goes a lot faster. This network was a little bit slower than usual. Typically you can expect this in between a minute and a half to three minutes if someone's on the network uh, actually doing something like streaming or, or visiting different web pages. Pretty easy. As you can see from this demonstration, WEP provides virtually no barrier to anybody looking to attack your network. Now, this is a problem because anybody on your network can launch a man-in-the-middle attack, which can completely control your internet experience and even steal your passwords. So if you or anyone you know uses WEP security on any of your networks, you should change it immediately. Thanks for watching this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.